So after her apology, she and the other hosts of The View spoke with Jonathan Greenblatt. Jonathan is the CEO and national director of the Anti-Defamation League, and he joins me now. I watched it today. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for joining us, and I appreciate you coming on. Let's have this conversation. First of all, I have to ask you about the news now, the breaking news. ABC News suspending Whoopi for two weeks. What do you think of that decision? Well, look, Whoopi Goldberg is literally one of the most visible women in television. The View is watched by millions and millions of people every single day. And her comments did cause tremendous confusion and hurt, particularly in a Jewish community, which, think about it, Don, it's less than a week after Holocaust Remembrance Day. It's but, you know, 10 days since a rash of anti-Semitic flyering across the country. It's two weeks after the hostage taking in Texas. It's six months after Jews were beaten in broad daylight by you know, anti-Israel activists. There are a lot of reasons why the Jewish community is concerned. But for me, she apologized last night online, and then she did so again this morning. You know, and I accept her apology. I know she's been a friend of the Jewish community all throughout her career, and I respect that and appreciate it. I can't comment on ABC News' internal process, but what I will say is that I hope Whoopi can use the next two weeks for a process of introspection and learning, right? I don't think Holocaust Remembrance Day should be one day of the year. We can learn about the Holocaust 365 days, just like today is the first day of Black History Month, Don, but I don't think we should confine our thinking about Black History to just 28 days. So let's hope that she can use this time, use this opportunity and use her amazing platform to educate herself and to share what she learns with her audience and with the country at large. Visit the Holocaust Museum, you know, meet with survivors, work with the ADL. There are lots of ways Whoopi can make a huge difference and I hope she'll do that. Here's a, uh, does intent matter? I mean, words matter, of course, but does intent matter, Jonathan, especially in this situation? Well, look, of course intent matters. I mean, it's really important that people say what they mean and they mean what they say. And so again, I think when she was talking yesterday about these issues, and I think she really, again, created a kind of confusion and hurt because the Holocaust was absolutely about race. It was a racialized anti-Semitism, Don. And again, that might not fit with the way that some people think about race, the way all of us as Americans have to confront it in this country, in this time, when black Americans are still dealing with the legacy of Jim Crow and enslavement and systemic oppression. And yet, race is a social construct and it shows up differently in different societies. And so again, if we look back to Germany, the Nazis believed that they were the master race and Jews were a subhuman race. And they Jews literally the race. waged That's a war. They believed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they waged and a war of extermination against the Jewish people because of this belief in race. That's undeniable, it's what happened. I want to get through a lot here, uh, and I, I'm not, I don't want to be rude, I'm not, but I just want to get through a lot because I have a lot of questions to ask you because I do think that this is a teachable yeah. moment, right? You said you stand in support yeah. of Whoopi because of her history, but you don't support the words yeah. the way she said it. And that's understand. I think there can be nuance there. So um, let's start there. You, we, so we spoke with you last night. This was after Whoopi issued uh, the statement, the apology. But before her previously, that was before her previously taped interview with Stephen Colbert, before that aired. I want to play just yeah. part of that. So watch this, Jonathan. If the Klan is coming down the street mm -hmm. and I'm standing with a Jewish friend and neither one, well, I'm going to run. Mm. <laughs> but, but if my friend decides not to run, they'll get passed by most times because you can't tell who's Jewish. You don't know. It's not something that people say, oh, that person is Jewish or this person is Jewish. And so that's what I was trying to explain. So Colbert did push back on her, bringing up that Nazis um, marked Jews with yellow stars so that they could easily be, uh, be recognized. Now, if you look at your screen, you can see a photo. This is from the 1940s. It shows just that. It was taken mm -hmm. uh, in the Lotz ghetto in Poland, right? How dangerous is the perspective that if you can't see someone's race on the outside, then they are safe from persecution? Do you think that that's dangerous? We know that's dangerous, and it's flat out wrong. 
So a few things. The Nazi Nuremberg laws that, sub, that regarded Jews as subhuman were based in part on the way that the laws about race existed in this country, that one drop of blood made a person Jewish, like they say one drop of blood made a person African-American or black in this country. So indeed, you can't see necessarily who is black or Jewish. This is a social construct. And let me say something else, Don. Let's dispel the myth that all Jews are white. There are millions of Jews of color. Jews who are black and who are brown, who are Asian, Jews of all hues. So just because someone presents as white or black doesn't mean you know their identity. And so I really think we just need to dispel this myth, you know, that the, that the Holocaust was white on white crime. Give me a break. This was a racist, horrific act of brutality. And if we think about those the KKK people, Don, who in her scenario would be chasing her down the street, let me tell you, they would chase her and me because anti-Semitism is at the beating heart of white supremacy. Blacks and Jews, we have so much in common, particularly that we have faced bigotry through the ages. And again, let's hope, Don, that through this moment, we can find ways to work together to face the hate that threatens all of us. Let me ask you, because as I am, honestly, you know, and this is in real time, as I am interviewing you, I have uh, people texting me, Jewish friends texting me. One of them is saying, censorship at its finest. I understood what she was trying to say. It was clumsy, but I don't think it was malevolent. What do you say to that? Well, I don't know who your friend is, and I don't know exactly what the context of the tweet is, but let me just say this. We sometimes have people in public places who can say clumsy things about race or faith or gender. I don't believe in cancel culture. I like the phrase that, mm. that my friend Nick Cannon uses. We need counsel culture. We shouldn't cancel Whoopi because she made a mistake, even if she made the mistake again on Colbert. Let, you know, in the Jewish faith, Don, we have a concept called shuva. And tshuva means redemption. It means all of us have the power to admit when we do wrong and to commit to doing better. I heard mm -hmm. Whoopi say that she's committed to doing better. I accept that apology with the sincerity with which she delivered it. Again, to my face this morning on The View. And I'm committed, ADL is committed to work with her and to work with others who really want to use this as a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to, this whole conversation, right, started with the book Mouse, right? Um, the Pulitzer Prize winning yeah. book Mouse, and it just about the, what people don't know about anti-Semitism. And the, Jonathan, there was a poll that most people, well, I shouldn't say most people, many people have no idea what the term anti-Semitism <laughs> means in this country. So we need a lot of educating in this country. Uh, we do. What's what's the what's the parting words here when people say, well, if you ask, you know, a lot of people on the street, you know, do you believe anti-Semitism exists? What is anti-Semitic and so on? Uh, are Jewish people, uh, is it a race or is it uh, Judaism or religion or race or what have you? I think many people would have no idea. So what do we do in this? What do we do now from here? Look, anti-Semitism, look, we're never going to beat anti-Semitism or hate of any kind, by just arresting people or litigating. We need to change hearts and minds. It starts with education, right? It's the oldest mm -hmm. hatred and it's this conspiracy theory, Don, that's lasted for thousands of years and led to tremendous suffering for Jewish people and death, you know, over time, whether in Europe or the Middle East. When you demonize and delegitimize Jewish people or the Jewish state, you create the sparks for violence and hate, and that's just gotta stop. The reality is Jews are less than 2% of the U.S. population, Don, and we're nearly 60% of the victims of faith-related hate crimes. Hate crime, right? The numbers are astonishing, what we've seen. Mm -hmm. And just, they're all, we're about 115% increase over the last five years. Jews have been targeted in our synagogues and our supermarkets and the places where we live. So anti-Semitism is a real issue for our community. And yet, the way we're going to beat this back is realizing that our safety is tied to both security and solidarity, calling out the hate when it happens and educating and working with others to create a better future for everyone. This is the thing, Don, and I've said this before on your show. Anti-Semitism is not a Jewish problem. It's an American problem. American problem yeah. It's a corrosive kind of hate that erodes the foundation of our society. And there's a through line from 
Charlottesville to Capitol Hill. We've got to confront this when it happens. We've got to do it with conviction. And again, I hope for Whoopi's sake that I'll have the chance ADL can work with her in the weeks and months and years ahead. And I hope your friends at The View, Don, our friends at The View, you know, they're looking for a fifth host. I'm kind of busy with my day job. I don't know about you, but I hope they'll think about a Jewish host for that slot. Like they focus a lot on representation. They haven't had a Jewish host in years. This would be a great way for The View to bring in a Jewish perspective and to address these issues on a, on a regular basis. Could really be a win-win for them if they get it right. Listen, I think that um, a good word for the moment is empathy. I think especially people, um, marginalized people, people of color, people who are traditionally discriminated against, yeah. when, when these moments happen, um, we need to be allies and we need to be empathetic and we need to open our ears instead of our mouths and listen. It is my job to ask the questions. Um, and I think you also have to remember too, uh, look, I said, I'm going to say, I thought what Whoopi said was clumsy. Do I think she's anti an anti-Semite? Mm -hmm. I don't think. Do I think that she can learn some things? Absolutely, I think that, um, yep. that she can. But um, I think in this moment, we need to think about intent. We need to think about who our allies are. And we need to, there is a difference between mm -hmm. someone who's marching on the street with a swastika or, you know, a crazy Auschwitz t-shirt than someone who is on a show called The View. Right. And because I say I'm on this show every night and I say things that I regret all the time. And sometimes sure, it comes out of my mouth that. and I want yeah. and I want to pull it back. Right. Um, and I think if, as long as we can learn from that and if the apology is sincere, I think we should allow people to move on and not so-called cancel them. But we have to learn our lessons Cance and we have counsel, to take, we've got to take the consequences right. for it. Right. Counsel, not cancel. Let's mm -hmm. And it seems like she's ready to commit to doing better, and I'm excited to help her with that process. I'm so glad we have people Don, like you here. Like, and let's I'm continue glad this you're conversation. Having, I'm glad you're hosting this conversation, Don, because this is what America needs, right? Reasoned, fact-based, empathetic conversation. That's how we move forward. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. We'll have you back. Thank you so much. I appreciate your candor. Thanks Thank for coming you, on.